to deliver a message concerning the truth. Now, that may seem ridiculous coming from us who are Christians. And as much as we know the Bible is the truth of God pertaining to the salvation of man's soul. But I have a little more to say about it than that. When Paul wrote to the church in the city of Ephesus, he declared, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Well, we are members one of another, Ephesians 4 and verse 25. Well, one would scarcely be able to speak the truth without knowing the truth. And, of course, one could not know the truth if such lies beyond man's reach. In fact, I don't know why I would be speaking tonight because if I can't know the truth, I don't know what I'm speaking. And you don't know what you're hearing. And you can't know that you know whether it's truth or error, if there is truth or error. In other words, this is so fundamental and basic, it's really quite difficult to discuss and think that men who have terminal academic degrees, doctorates, would actually hold such a view. But it is one of the absurd theories being propagated that man cannot absolutely know and speak the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yet we are commissioned if we know anything, but of course some say we don't, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we can be truthful. And we must also preach the truth. Now, Brother Ken's been engaged and will for some time in the study of logic. But if you can't know the truth, I'd like to know what good it is to study about correct reasoning. From many viewpoints, I think we can say this safely, that the inspired apostle John is most interesting character. But no characteristic is more prominent, at least in his writings, than his certainty of knowledge. And not just in one area, but a multiplicity of areas. Uh, one of them we're primarily interested in, that is knowing and speaking the truth uh, pertaining to God and man's salvation. Now, now consider this fact that John records the statement of Jesus, and we know this statement. I pro I, it's probably one of the verses most faithful gospel preachers quote and preach about as much as any, in fact, more than some. And it's John 8, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What sense does that make if you can't know the truth? And why would Christ make such a statement if it's unknowable? That is the truth, unknowable. We can speak of our freedom because it is of and by the truth. And I mean freedom from sin and freedom in Christ. The child of God must, imperative if you can read the Bible, Freely speak all things which have any relationship to the truth. Even the explicit, in just so many words, truth of the Bible, when reasoned with, imply truth. Error never does imply truth. Truth implies truth. There's a body of truth to be known, and we must know it. Listen to the psalmist, the word we go back to the Old Testament. In Psalm 31 and verse 5, thou, speaking of God, thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. And he further declared all his works are done in truth. 
Psalm 33, 4. And further, the psalmist expounded upon the truth of God when he said these words. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering. Now listen to him. And plenteous in mercy and truth. Psalm 86, verse 15. Moses, inspired of the Spirit, could say, all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. It's kind of interesting to consider that for a moment. If you can't know the truth, how can you know what's right? How could there be a right or a wrong if you can't know the truth? In fact, how could you even know what I just said? So you see the silliness of the whole thing. But really, it's insanity if you really want to describe it, what it is. As we come down to the weeping prophet Jeremiah, he asked, Oh Lord, are not thy eyes? Upon the truth, Jeremiah 5 in verse 3. And then by the time you come on down to, to the days of, of Daniel, we see that there was an actual body of truth that was extant, that they had access to. He, he said this, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. Daniel chapter 10, verse 21. Well, isn't it strange that the prophet could show the truth of scriptures? But here come some people asking us to believe that such is not possible. Here's a little uh, rhyme scheme you might keep in mind. If we cannot know it, we cannot show it. It would be a ridiculous thing to say, by their fruits ye shall what? Know them. That's because they're doing what the Bible says. They learn what the Bible says. They know what the Bible says. They live by what the Bible says, and their actions show it. So if you can't know the truth, then your actions can't show it. When I first became exposed to this absurdity, I was, uh, my last semester, really it was just right after it, at Harding College. Then it was known as that. There was the head of the English department, Dr. James Atterbury, PhD in English, who the year before had won the outstanding whatever it is teacher award for the college. They had a habit up there, um, tradition, that in the summer before the fall term semester started, they would go out to Camp Wildwood, which you know, must have been connected with Harding, knows something about that, still there. But all the teachers would go out there and out and have a workshop of sorts, sort of getting them primed up for the fall semester. And at that time, I guess it would have been um, in the summer of 1968. Atterbury is one of the speakers actually affirmed that now we cannot know the truth. We can't know it. We can only reach toward it. Well, that is even an absurd statement. Because when I reach towards something, I know it's there. I would be reaching for it. So it's really ridiculous, but that's what he said. And it caused no little furor. And actually, it caused a number of teachers to leave Harding. And of course, in those days, Pepperdine University in California was liberal before liberal was cool. And he went straight out there. He's dead now, been dead for several years, but that's how long a lot of this kind of stuff's been going on among the very educated. I would say anybody that would work through a PhD in any reputable place and turn around and tell me you can't absolutely and objectively know the truth, 
doesn't need a PhD. In fact, it needs to go back to pre-kindergarten and hopefully start there. But that's what we call education, and that kind of stuff's governing the United States in a great many ways nowadays. Now, come with me, and we see that Jesus spoke of himself as the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. Well, can we know Jesus the Christ? If we can, we can know the truth. If Christ is the truth, can we speak the truth when we speak of him? Of course we can. And perhaps it would be of tremendous help if we would consider the certainty and assurance which children of God have in knowing the things of God. Let's keep in mind that when the Bible is given, it doesn't bypass the way God created us to come to know anything. And he expects us to exercise our faculties to know him through his revealed word, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, James 1, verse 25, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Not only does he expect us to know it, but he expects us to handle it correctly, 2 Timothy 2, 15. He expects us to study it, to learn about God to learn how we can have forgiveness of sins, live a life on earth, always trying to be like God. 1 John 2 and verse 3, the apostle wrote, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. John also stated that I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it and that no lie is of the truth, 1 John 2, verse 21. I think of Revelation 21, 8. It said, all liars shall have their part along with others, and the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is second death. Well, if you can't know the truth, how do you determine who's a liar? So some things seem to be quite simple to me that a person shouldn't have to have a PhD in English or anything else to be able to understand that you can Know that truth corresponds with facts. And anything that doesn't correspond with the fact is not the truth, it's false. Of course, uh, an atheist would object to what we just said. At least some would. Some wouldn't, but you can't expect atheists to be consistent. So how can anyone be brazen enough to walk to a pulpit or take pen in hand and proclaim that we cannot know the truth? I wouldn't say just brazen. I'd go back to what I said a while ago. Absurd, ludicrous, intellectually insane is what they are. We can know that when he shall appear, speaking of Christ, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First John 3 and verse 2. If we know this, we ought to tell people about it, for such is the truth. First John chapter 3, verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Now, knowing this, we should inform all others, because that's the truth of the matter. 1 John 3 and verse 14, the apostle says, we know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. Now, we don't have to guess nor have doubts about this. And furthermore, along the same line, we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 3 verse 15. So man may and they have and they will pervert, twist, deny, or reject the truth. And even the truth specifically that John wrote about in 1 John 3.15. But we know the truth about such. And we can preach the truth on the matter. Inspired John could say, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. 1 John 3.19. So there's no excuse for any man to be a, uh, say, I'm sorry, that kind of apology or doubtful, or fearful, or wavering about matters of truth. 
This doesn't mean that we are to boast or to brag or feel like there's nothing left to learn. But uh, when you learn the truth, it's just the truth, whether it's learn today or tomorrow or whatever, or the truth we learn was, has been there a thousand years. We just discovered it. It's still the truth. So we know that we are of the truth and we preach the truth. If this sounds like a spirit of dogmatism, then how's it sound coming from the pen of John? Because he was rather dogmatic. He knew he was right. And we're not being proud and boastful just to know we're right. So we can know we're right. But we know we're right because we can know the truth, the truth of the gospel. So we need to tell people the truth. We know by keeping the commandments that Jesus Christ dwells in us and we in him. John said, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he gave us, 1 John 3, 24. Now he's speaking as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And the apostles were baptized in the baptismal measure of the Holy Spirit. They had that kind of power to be able to be the ambassadors of the court of heaven. So that when they spake by the Spirit, they spoke the will of Christ. And the early church knew that. Acts 2.42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's interesting. They couldn't know it. How would they continue steadfastly in it? And as we keep the commandments of Christ, he abides in us. There's not any supernatural whatever of the Holy Spirit regarding a direct connection. Many false teachers were busy during the days of John, and some of them were effective. Some even denied the fact that Christ had come. Others confessed the coming of Jesus, and these were of God, according to John, 1 John 4, 2. But as we bring the lesson to a close, 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And then in 1 John 4, 13, Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And that's from, I just quoted 1 John 4, 13. But the word of God is the sword of the spirit, the very instrument the spirit uses to convict men of sin, convert them to Christ, and to keep them faithful. And I can't know that, Ephesians 17. So I simply close by saying, somebody says I can't know the truth. I'm just going to go ahead and know it anyway. And also know that a person like that needs to be ignored and rejected because you know what he is. Thank you.